All right, we're quickly coming to the end of our look at, uh, well, a deeper look at functions. In this video, we're going to learn about something called function or variable scope. Now, scope is um, a nerd term, and it uh, basically, think of scope, think of, I don't know, territory, or, you know, like you get a scope of products, you know, I don't, I don't know. I'm just going to show you an example. And I think things will sink in because this is an important concept because understanding this will keep you from breaking a lot of your code down the road. So we, we've seen this before. We have our function, create array. It ends here. And you see outside the function, we have a for loop that uses the products variable, which is our array. We see we use it here, products, to loop through the array to, dis, to uh, print out the contents of the array, which is here, onto the page. So let's load this page, and we'll see that it's not going to work. So we click, nothing happens. Oh, let me scroll down here. Unclick, right? Create array, which is this function here, create array. And yeah, so we go back. So let's go back here. Click, nothing happens. So let's look at the error console under Tools. You see, product is not defined. So let's clear that up again, reload, product is not defined. On the load, right? When, the page, when I say on the load, I mean when the page loads, we, we, we got that error. So let's go tools, error. So let's uh, let me clear this and I'll load the page. See, products with an S is not defined. So let's take a look at our code and we'll see what's going on. On products, you say, well, well, we defined it here, so I understand. See, what's happening is that, remember, we're using the products variable here. So because this for loop is outside of this function, as far as JavaScript is concerned, this for loop has no idea what this products variable is. It does not exist. Why? Because this is outside of the world. This for loop is outside of the world of this function. Watch what happens. So if I take this, I'll cut and paste that. Never mind this, I just uh, commented this out. You got the two slashes, slashes, so as far as JavaScript is concerned, this is nothing, it ignores that. So so now this for loop is inside of the function create array. Now let's see what happens. So let me reload, reload the page. I'll click it, and it works. And the reason it works is because by putting this for loop Inside this create array function, this for loop was within the scope of this code here, right? So this for loop all of a sudden understood, knew what products was, this variable, products, because it was in the same scope. Does that make sense? Now, when I put it out here, all of a sudden, this for loop loses the connection with this products variable that we defined here and uh, it won't work. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about variable and function scope. Whatever's in here is separate from here. So you can create a products variable out here, and you can create another one out here, and they're considered separate by JavaScript. So let's, let's do that, and uh, you'll see what I mean. So you see here, I've created a second array called products, right? And I give it a whole bunch of different values from what we had up here. And it's not, it's outside of this function, right? So this products array is different from this products array. So let's see what happens. So I got our for loop here, which is looping through our products array. So let's uh, reload the page. And you see one, two, three, four, because this is being loaded automatically because the code is not in a function, so it's not in stasis, right? So let's now, uh, well, there you go. So you see that because these are in the same scope, they're outside of any function, that means that uh, this for loop is able to see this products array here. Make sense? I gave them different values, so it was clear to you that we were printing out this other array, this other products array. Now I could do something here. I can go like this, copy. 
Now we're inside the, this function. Now we're going to see two printouts of two different arrays, right? So we reload, and I just hit that. See, so they both worked. Does that make sense? So when the page first loaded, we saw this array, right? So let's just load the page. Well, I'm going to go back. We load the page. We see the first array. And then when I click the the uh, the H2 button down here, which calls the create array function, which we defined up here, then this new, the second array, which happens to have the name of products, also prints out. So we'll do that again. Click it. Here's our second array. So as you can see, I'm hoping you see the effect of scope, variable scope on your code. So you got to make sure that your scopes are lined up properly, if you will. So if you want to loop through an array inside this function, you probably want to have your looping code in the same in the function as well. It has to be in the same scope rather. There's different ways of doing that. We won't get into that here. Before we leave this, I want to uh, point out one thing. It's important with the naming that you use unique names as much as possible for your various arrays and your various variables and functions. For instance, even though these are in a different scope and they won't conflict with each other, it could get confusing as a programmer if you have two arrays on the same page with the name products, right? It could just cause you problems down the road. So it would have been a better idea to call this uh, products, whatever, list, or products two, whatever you want to call it. So this way, people wouldn't confuse what's going on in here versus what's going on out here. I want to clarify one last point about scope in JavaScript. I've rewritten a bit of a code here and what I want to show you is the difference between local scope and global scope. These are two terms that uh, I didn't clearly define at least by you know at least as far as I'm concerned. So let's let's just jump into it real quick. You notice I put the products array, I define the products array outside of our create array function here. And, but in the create array function, I use the for loop to loop through it. Now, some of you may be thinking this won't work, but this will work. And let me just prove that to you. Just load this up, click, and here's our array, right? So I call the uh, on click here. I have the event handler, the on click event handler, and I call the create array function. The reason this works is because when you define a variable outside of any function, it becomes a global variable. It has global scope. And that simply means that any function and any other code can use this variable because it's been defined outside of a function. As soon as I put this in this function, then this variable, in this case the products variable, this array becomes loco to this create array function. And that's what they say. So any variables declared inside of a function are considered local variables. They are local to the function. Think about your location, local, you know, something is local to you. And any variables created outside of any function is called a global variable. And all functions in the script have access to those variables. So that's why this for loop worked even though this was outside of this function. I hope this little bit helps to uh, further clarify the differences between global variables and local variables and variable function scope.